Okay, in this quick tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how to display uh, a message uh, in assembly language on the Amstrad CPC. Now, I'm using an Amstrad 6128 um, computer, 128K of memory, and I'm also using my favorite assembler, disassembler, and monitoring tool, which was called Adam or marketed as Adam in the UK. Um, but um, in France, it was known as DAMS. And there's still a little bit of support by the looks of it um, uh, in terms of the original author as it's provided some bug fixes as recently as two years ago. Um, there are many assemblers out there. Some have got their different nuances. But my favorite was Adam um, just because of the, the way that I could load it into one of the extra memory pages on the Amstrad. So let's get going. Uh, one of my favorite tricks for using Adam was to load it into one of the additional RAM banks. So I'm going to enter out ampersand 7f00 comma 196 which switches in the first um, 16k of the additional 64k memory into the memory bank at uh, hexadecimal 4000 or 16384 and I'm just going to load up the Adam um, ID I suppose you could call it uh, back then and here we go, it's automatically loaded at 16384 and we've got the basic interface here. Um, to quit back to, to basic, um, press B for basic or buy and you're away. And the reason I really like this tool is if by accident you reset the, the machine or you crash or hang, etc. Like I'm going to do here, um, clearly I'm using an emulation tool, I can um, go back to memory swap this in. Um, really I should protect it by setting uh, memory at 3FFF or 16383 and now I can just call 4000 and Adam is already there. I kind of like the um, black background and um, white text it's, it's what I'm familiar with but ev everyone's got their personal preference. Okay so the, the um, assembly tool, it's, it's all self-contained. Um, so if you're familiar with Maxam um, or Gem, they, they have differences. But anyway, for this one, uh, if I want to go to create a listing, I'll press L for list. And this will take me to the editor. Uh, I would now, it, there isn't anything there for the moment, but I can um, press the left arrow, which puts me into editing mode. Now, it has some very subtle differences. Um, one of the key tips the, the programmer originally stated was um, insert a semicolon first, um, because you can enter L semicolon, it'll take you to the very top of the listing. Um, next, we're going to set the origination address, so org. Um, and I'm going to put in A00, which is a very popular and common address uh, for little short programs. Uh, 40960, I think, in decimal. Um, now with the emulator that I'm using Arnold on a Mac OS, um, whenever I have to enter the hash key uh, a Z appears, so apologies everybody, I have to do a little bit of editing. But this is the origination address and I'm going to say the program here is start. This is a label, so labels um, go in the first column, first character column. Um, commands you have to press space um, so that they move um, to about 10 columns in I think. So we're going to say for this program the entry address is dollar so that is at the current memory location so in this case A000. And the first thing we need to do is we, we need to load the HL pointer uh, or the HL register with the memory location of the message we want to display. And there's many ways to, to do this in um, assembler. Um, some prefer to have zero terminated strings, which, which is a zero byte at the end of the message. And others prefer to set bit seven um, because it's more optimal, um, better use of memory. Potentially, depends how many messages you want to print in this way. So um, we're going to say load HL with message. Um, and here we go, um, HL. memory buffer. I don't know how yeah, I've run out of characters here. Um, okay, and then we're going to add in a loop. So we've got a label here, loop. 
Um, first thing is we need to load the accumulator uh, with whatever is in memory address in HL. So we have load LD A comma in brackets HL. So load character. Whoa. Um, I know that the um, the text will move off the screen, but for um, anybody whose first language is not English, hopefully this may help. Um, can't guarantee it, so I can't tend to talk quickly. Okay, so we're going to load uh, the accumulator, and we're going to do a test. So we need to know if it's a zero byte, and the easiest way to do that, or the most optimal or efficient, is to do an OR operation. So OR A, and here we are, check for uh, zero bytes loaded. If it is zero, then we want to quit the program as quickly as possible. Um, so again, space and then ret z uh, return zero. So quit. Oops, I say uh, I call it routine. It's not really a program. It could be a routine in a, in a program that you write later. So we just quit routine and return to the caller. Um, in our instance, it will be basic. Okay, so we know that it's not a zero character, so we need to print it on screen, and we'll use the firmware routine at um, hash bb5a. So I'll just enter in here hash bb5a. So this will print a character at the current text cursor location, and next we will do um, increment hl. So we want to move the memory pointer in HL by one, so it moves to the next character or the next position in memory. And then we're going to repeat it all again. So jump relative to, to loop. Um, this is quicker than JP. JP um, is three bytes, which is the um, uh, command for JP, and then the two bytes, which is the um, absolute address in memory. Jump relative is two bytes, JR for the command, and then a byte offset, um, plus or minus, I think 127, 128 um, bytes in memory. So it's optimal, it's quicker, um, and there's pros and cons to, to using this approach. Now, when, when using um, Adam, um, if you've realized that you haven't added any comments or, or additional commands, you can hit return to jump back to the pointer or the cursor in here and then I can press the right arrow or cursor key right and then I can now add in a comment here so this is um, a firmware routine for character printing uh, we want to increment uh, memory address in HL And we're going to repeat till zero bytes found. And then we need to incorporate uh, a message, some description. So we're going to put a label in called message, which is what we've pointed to in our HL at the start. And in Adam, um, I can um, define a message. And we're going to say, hello world. Oops, uh, right, I forgot. I can't have comments in um, defn or define message. And we also need to make sure that we've got a zero byte for termination. So um, define byte, def b, zero. There we go. Now, if we were to, to run this program, this will work. Um, so I'm going to hit return, hit return again, and then press A to assemble. Um, and here we see that it was compiled. Um, the end of code is at 40986 and the code executes at 40960. If you want to see this in hexadecimal, press Control B and you'll see at the top um, right hand corner it's the um, indicator has moved to hex um, rather than decimal. Now then I could do assemble again and here we go, we've got a very short program. 
to disassemble, um, I can do uh, the D command and then start is the first label that we had. And here we can see the code that we've created, which is in um, six, nine, uh, six, nine, 12 bytes of code. And then the message you can see here um, looks a little bit like gobbledygook. In fact, it would actually run and then it would crash eventually. But if you want to see what was in memory at that point, so I press Q to quit um, out of the disassembly and I can use the K command uh, to display memory and I can either give, give a label or a memory address. So let's say, let's give it the label message and here we go. We can see here we've got um, the bytes defined as hello world um, so you can see the ASCII and its representation. Now um, I can execute the program in, in many ways but if I press J to jump um, it, this will go to the int dollar string which is at A000 and you can see the very top of the screen hello world and the reason it's in the top left hand corner is because the cursor the firmware cursor position is currently set at the, the top. If we run that again and press jump, you can see that it's um, continuing where it left off. Um, we can also execute the same program by providing an address, jump hash A000, and again, hello world. You can also trace it. So if you're interested in how this is working, um, we can um, enter trace start and here we have the uh, the monitor portion and it's very useful to learn um, assembly language here to see what's happening with the registers so the you, you can see here uh, the PC the program counter um, this is where code will be executed the next instruction um, you've also got your um, uh, IX IY and your R register um, which is often known as the refresh register. The refresh register is quite an interesting one in that it's bit 7 never gets set, so the values are always 0 to 7f, and it will increment um, with the processor. So it can be used as a random number generator, um, although very loosely, I guess. You've got HL, DE, BC, and AF. That's the accumulator and flags. So you know that if there's a carry, non-carry, zero, non-zero, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, or even an overflow. Um, you've got your stack pointer, um, which, and you've got the display of the stack on the right-hand side there, which tells me where the program will return. You've also got the alternate um, register set. So there's an alternate HL, DE, BEC, and AF, um, and we can cover that in another session. So for now. I can press return and we can see that HL is loaded with A00C, which if we remember earlier, contains um, the memory location for the message. We load the accumulator with HL, so the first byte is 48. We can see that in AF. And then we run a test, so OR A. So we're ORing it with itself. If it's non zero, uh, it will. Um, if it's zero, it'll be zero. If it's non-zero, the, the, the zero flag won't be set. And we can see here in the flags that the zero bit in the AF has not been set. Um, and we return if it's zero. In this case, the program will continue to the next line of execution, which is to call BB5A. Now, we can trace this if we wanted to, but we're not going to. So I'm going to press Q to quit the um, monitor and press R to resume it and it will come back to the next stack address. Um, oh. Okay. So we printed the character H, which is what um, the, the program was done, and we're incrementing HL, and we can see here that HL has moved to location A00D. Previously it was A00C. Um, you'll notice that this particular call to BB5A preserves all registers and flags. Um, so it's um, you have to be careful with the firmware. Some are destructive. Um, this one is a non-destructive call. Um, it's very useful. So we increment HL 
and then we do a jump relative to A003. So as I said earlier, um, you've got the 18, which is the jump relative command, and then F7 is an offset to, to go backwards. Um, so it's a, I think it's a two's complement um, offset. So again, we load A with the memory contents of HL, and that is now 65, um, which is hex for the uh, hex for the value E, lowercase e. And we can continue. Like so. And we can carry on tracing this. Uh, if you've got time, you can trace the, the HL uh, and the, the firmware calls. Um, if you load Adam into the 4000 hex memory space, um, it will give you the opportunity for tracing ROMs for both upper and lower ROMs. And it's a very powerful tool. So there we have it. So this is the first, first version. Now, um, if I want to go back to my listing, I'm going to press L. And this will take me to the last location my cursor uh, was located. So I need to look at the, um, the code at the top. I'm going to add a second variant to this one. So I'm going to move the cursor to uh, the next portion and we're going to use bit seven. So I'm going to add a label here called start version two. We're not going to use the nth dollar because we can't have two entry addresses to a program. And um, this is just to tell the assembler where to start execution. And we're going to add a new message type. So we have load HL with message two. And we're going to have a second loop. We're going to call this loop two. Load A with HL, which is what we had previously. So we're going to load um, the accumulator with the contents of memory pointed to by HL. And this time we're going to um, make sure that we've masked out the seventh bit. And there's two ways we could do this. Um, I, I prefer um, and hash 7F. So we're only anding it with the lower six, um, uh, sorry, the lower seven bits of data. Um, but you can use bit seven, oops, you can use reset seven comma A. It's a preference thing. I think there's a better, slightly better performance using the and um, rather than the reset of a, of a bit. I could be, could be wrong. I'm sure there's somebody more geeky than me that can um, explain that. And then we've got um, a call to BB5A, which is our standard firmware call. Now you notice that we're not quitting. We actually need to print the character. So when the bit seven is set, we still need to, to print whatever was there. Um, and then I'm going to load the accumulator with HL, the contents of HL again. And, and the reason being is, is that because we reset the, um, any, any bits so that the character was printable, um, it was destroyed. Um, the quickest way is this is only a one byte um, or four cycle, um, four clock cycle call. Uh, it's just quicker and more expedient that way, I'm sure. With assembly, there's many ways of achieving the same task. Uh, uh, experts out there may have a better better view. Um, okay, so again, there's different ways that we can check for bit seven and see if we need to terminate. Um, I can use bit seven comma A for the accumulator for testing bit seven and return if not zero. So we say that if bit seven is set, we can quit. We could have and hash eight zero in hex. Um, that would do the same, um, but I, I prefer this one. You, you could also do a, a rotate, and there's, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Programmers have, uh, have got their own particular style. And again, increment HL for the pointer, and then we're going to jump to back to loop two. So we're going to repeat the process all over again. Now we need to define the message. So message two. Uh, I'm going to have def m, so define message, hello, oops, hello, world, bit, 
seven set. And I'm not going to set I'm not going to add the T, so I'm going to remove the T. And I'm going to add a new byte. Um, so I'm going to add in uh, define byte and then in quotes the uh, letter T. And then I'm going to add in hex of 80, which is to set the top bit, so set bit 7, like so. Okay. And again, um, I shall add in the comments here. So load HL, um, load HL with message bit 7 set. Load A with contents of memory in HL. Firmware call to print chart. Reload accumulator. So we're reloading the accumulator because we destroyed it when we masked it above. I'm going to check for bit seven set. Quit if set. So we're going to exit the routine if it is. Um, increment memory pointer in HL. And we're going to loop back. And there we have our messages. So we can um, assemble code. Oh, illegal character reference. So if we press L when this occurs, this will take us to where the intax, uh, syntax error occurred. So I've obviously done something correct. And uh, when you're using the plus sign to, to add, you can't have spaces. So it's nice for clarity, but this assembler doesn't like it. So if I now press A, return, we can see uh, the code is compiled. And we can do um, a disassemble start to, oops, what did I call it? Start V2, disassemble start V2. And that's at A00C, which was where our message was previously. And again, we've got our jump relative. Um, so you see F3, is, it's got further to go backwards to get back to um, to the loop. Um, and then we've got our, our messages. So we can have a look at message two in memory. And you can see here, hello world, bit seven set. And you can see the letter T has been replaced with F4, which means that the bit seven has been set on the, the letter T in this instance. Okay, and then we can execute it. So start v2. Ah, uh, we've interfered with the top line, so I'll just run this a couple of times. So there we go. Hello world, bit seven set. Um, so we've saved one byte in terms of the actual message, but we've increased the size of the, the routine um, by uh, how many have we got here? Uh, two, four, six, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, sixteen. So we've got sixteen bytes as opposed to twelve bytes. So if you've got a lot of messages, then you may shave a few bytes and a few cycles off. Um, but again, this is really all down down to you. And again, if you want to um, understand it. How the program's working, then T to start, uh, T to trace, and then you get your program counter, which is now set at A00C, which is where start V2 is. And again, you can press return and you can trace through. Um, let's do that. Um, and you can see the effects on the register. So you can see in the flags on the bottom uh, left hand side there whether zero bit is set or whether it's not zero, etc. cetera. 
if you want to have a look at the memory for the the whole whole piece um, let's have a look um, so we do k start for the label and here we go here's our program so 21 is load hl um, it's in uh, i can't remember the sign it's a little endian format i think so the the lowest is in the first byte and the highest most significant byte is in the second byte so a01c is the memory location for message um, 70 is load a with hl etc etc so there's you, you can after a while you'll learn what all these opcodes and what these um, these numbers and digits mean i hope you found this useful uh, as i said there's many different ways to achieve the same result in in assembler um, some are more optimal and more efficient than, than others and um, yeah please subscribe to my channel if you found this useful thank you